Well, welcome and thank you for joining us today for the Chamber Skills Series presentation, Email Marketing in a Nutshell. This session will be recorded and we'll be sharing it with attendees and we'll also have it available on our Chamber website. We are able to provide this offering to our members free of charge because of the generosity of our sponsor, Lake Superior College. Speaking today on behalf of Lake Superior College is Daniel Fanning, Vice President of Institutional Advancement and External Relations. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Bailey. Thanks for joining us today. As on behalf of Lake Superior College, we just want to say how proud we are to sponsor this and help make it available for more people. As a community and technical college, we just like to have offerings like this. It's part of our educational offerings that we like to do just kind of around around town and just make sure that people are connected. So just really appreciate the work that Bailey and, and all of our colleagues at the chamber do. Look forward to hearing from Aaron, but really just on behalf of Lake Superior College, thanks for letting us be part of this and thanks for the great work you do, Bailey. We appreciate it. No, thank you, Daniel. I'm thrilled to introduce our speaker today, Aaron Abrahamson, CEO of Pro Sound and Light Chill. Thank you for speaking us today, for us today, and I'll turn it over to you, Aaron. Perfect. Well, thanks for having me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my screen shared here. There we go. It's like, can you see my screen? That's the phrase of 2020. Yep, looks great. <laughs> All right, so I got my contact information up there. Um, today's con uh, talk is going to be about email marketing in a nutshell. Everything you need to know about email marketing at your fingertips. Uh, not only do I own Pro Sound and Light Show, but I'm also a Keep certified partner. Keep is an email marketing platform for small businesses. And if you want want to get you want to get today's slides, you can scan that QR code or text the word slides to my phone number 218-282-2766. Uh, if, you, if you scan that QR code, what it's gonna do is it's gonna actually pop up in your phone to, to send slides to the phone number automatically pre-filled for you so you don't have to type anything and worrying about typing it. Uh, once you send that text, you just uh, fill in your name, your email, and then the copy of the slides for today will be emailed to you directly. I'll go ahead and show this QR code again at the end of today's um, seminar. So hi, I'm Aaron. I'm uh, a Keep Certified Partner, but I also happen to own ProSound and Light Show. Uh, ProSound and Light Show is a DJ and photo booth company here in Duluth. Uh, we've got over 47 W2 employees, part-time event staff. Uh, and a little bit about me is I love marketing. Marketing is fascinating. I love the psychology of it. I studied marketing in college and I use marketing day in and day out in my businesses. And so when I bought Pro Sound and Light Show back in 2014 as a company, we were only doing about 500 events per year. And I grew us to, we produced over 2,100 events in 2019 pre-pandemic, a little bit, a little bit less than that here uh, last year and this year, but we are looking forward to getting back to that levels as things level out. Uh, and I actually leveraged Keep, uh, again, Keep is a CRM and email marketing platform to grow my business through email marketing. And I actually became a Keep certified partner to help other businesses grow too. One of my uh, pivots through the pandemic has been to help other uh, entertainment companies uh, really work on their businesses and growing their own businesses through email marketing. So what we're going to cover today is the three different types of emails that you can use in your business. And then we'll use those emails inside the five different types of email campaigns, the different kind of sequences that you can use to send emails to your subscribers and your email lists. And then we'll talk about some email best practices, uh, different tips, ways to improve email deliverability, ways to stay on top of like the can spam act and, and so on. And then we'll also talk about the email KPIs. Now KPI stands for key performance indicator. These are the different metrics and numbers that you can use to measure the success of your email marketing campaigns. Now, before we dive too deep into email marketing, uh, I just want to make sure you guys know that email marketing is not dead, says smart marketers everywhere. <laughs> Digital marketers in today's day and age know that email is a critical part of any company's any brands, any businesses, whole digital marketing campaign. And uh, it is crucial. 
And why do we need email marketing? Well, that's simply because email has become so ingrained in our daily routine that we check it without realizing it. Everybody has these little email reading devices in their pockets <laughs> and uh, you probably can't count the number of times per day that you check your own emails. In 2020, an average of 293.6 billion emails were sent daily. That's a lot of email. And the average return on investment for every dollar spent on email marketing is about $42 return. So you spend a dollar, you get $42 back on, on email marketing on average. And then the average open rate for welcome emails is 82%. The key thing with emails is getting people to open them. And if you send out a welcome email, welcoming a new subscriber to your list, the open rate for welcome emails is averaging around 82%. Emails with personalized subject lines generate a 50% higher open rate. Think about the emails that you get and the emails that you open up in your inbox, the ones that have your name or are personalized to you and, and your life. Those are the ones that have the, you're more likely to open up and check out what's inside. Now, if you do e-commerce, if you do any kind of um, business, uh, bookings, sales online, if you send out abandoned cart emails, so uh, just like when you visit Amazon and you put something in your shopping cart and then you don't check out and the abandoned cart email sequences that go out, if you send out three emails instead of just one, you're gonna have 69% more orders from those sequences. So it is very important to your bottom line to actually send out abandoned cart emails. And then, Videos added to your emails will increase your, increase your click-through rates by over 300%. Now, when you get an email, if you open it up and there's a video or a, a little image with a play button on it, people are gonna click that because they wanna see the video. And then 49% of consumers would like to receive promotional emails from their favorite brands. Now, this is one of my favorite statistics. That's saying that almost half of consumers are saying, yes, I want to receive promotional emails from the brands and the companies that I like and that I follow. That means that your customers, the people that like you and your brands, they half, the, half of your customers want to receive promotional emails. And that's great. So let's go over the three different types of emails that are out there. First, I wanna say that emails are tools. And just as you wouldn't use a screwdriver to hammer in a nail, you wanna use the right email for the right occasion. Now, of the three types of emails, we've got transactional emails. We have promotional emails. And then finally, we have content emails. Now let's go over what a transactional email is. Transactional emails, these are the emails that typically have an exchange of vital information that your customer needs, such as like shipping information and tracking information, login credentials, invoices and receipts, cancellation requests. These are typically sent from the customer service team. And while vital, these emails are often overlooked. A great transactional email can seriously boost your customer relationships because when you think about it, if you're sending out a meeting reminder or for a Zoom meeting or a webinar or sales consultation, you want your customers to get those reminder emails so that way they will show up to your meeting. Same thing with transactional receipts. When somebody books or buys from your business, you wanna make sure that they get that receipt of payment so that way they have the trust that one, their payment went through correctly, and two, that, that you, the order was received so that way they can then expect to get whatever it is that you promised them. So let's take a look at some transactional emails. Now these are emails that I use in my company. So we've got a list of payments received so far. So this is like an unauthorized.net merchant receipt. This is the um, credit card receipt when somebody makes a payment. Then we've got your event planning account. This event planning account is the uh, welcome email. So th thank you so much for booking our company. Click here to log into your online planner. 
Um, here's what to expect from us. Here's how to contact us and so on. And then finally, uh, for our, our photo booth company, we send out transactional emails whenever a guest at an event uses one of our photo booths. They take their picture, they put their email address in, and we email them their photo. That's a transaction. Here's, here's your photo. We are delivering on the promise that we made to them that they can get their picture. Let's take a look at promotional emails. Promotional emails are emails that typically include some kind of marketing or promotional material with the explicit goal of one, driving immediate sales, or two, driving qualified leads into your sales team. So these emails are heavy copywriting uh, driven. They are often written in the voice of your brand or figurehead, and they have a set schedule to send promotional emails is important. Uh, they shouldn't be sent every day or it will exhaust your list and make your brand feel scammy and spammy. So these are the emails that you send out like, hey, buy now, hey, special promotion, act quick, using leveraging the copywriting, the copy in the email with a clear call to action. So here's some example promotional emails that I use in my business. I've got uh, a email that goes out to thank everybody that attended a bridal show. And, and here, here's the link to register for our sale. Click here to get our special pricing and promotion. Act now, limited time, and so on. Black Friday emails. This is is huge. Uh, you you want to run a, a sales promotion like Black Friday, Memorial Day, uh, Christmas in July, any kind of regular sale where you want people to to buy now or register or to to get the details. These are the emails that are clearly promotional. And then the same thing here, a promotional email. This email is designed to go out to uh, engaged couples um, and to, to say, hey, here we are. This is what we do. It's very tongue in cheek. It's designed to um, get them to laugh, to get them to reply, get them to say, sorry, uh, no thanks. We're not looking for your services. It's designed specifically to engage with the recipients to get them to start the conversation about booking us for their event. So now let's talk about content emails. These emails are typically uh, in including the kind of valuable content with the goal of either providing value in advance or nurturing your relationship with your customers. Think of newsletters, free resources, product highlights. These are all great types of content to use. You could also use reviews. Um, you could, whenever you blog on your uh, website, you can send out a link to the blog post. Um, you want to use metrics when you send these emails, like your click-through rate and your email opens to determine if your customers are actually getting value from your content. If you send out a promotional email, people are going to either buy or not buy. And so you can actually measure the success of that email and the value of it based on how many people buy from that campaign. When you send out content emails, that's a little bit harder to, to discover and figure out if the people on your email list are getting value from them. So that's why we look at how many people are opening them and how many people are clicking through to whatever resource you're providing. If they're opening them and clicking on them, they're consuming them and getting value. So that that's where you want to determine when to change up your content emails based on, on those metrics. Let's take a look at some example content emails. So here's one. This is a wedding planning tips email that we send out. It says, hey, you're getting married in 365 days. Here's a checklist of things you should be doing this month. Stay tuned. We'll send you another email next month to tell you what to work on. If there's no call to action. There's no sales. There's no transaction here. This is purely helpful, beneficial content to better establish the relationship between the person on the list and the business. Here's another wedding planning tip email that we send out talking about wedding favors that don't get thrown away. We talk about having a photo booth at your wedding or event and using the photo booth strips to give away as favors to the guests because Everybody who's used a photo booth takes that photo strip home, sticks it on their fridge, and it's going to be sitting there eight years later uh, when they finally get a new fridge. And then we have a third 
content email here talking about choosing wedding flowers. Uh, we talk about different florists, different flowers that are in season. And, and again, it's beneficial information providing to the people that subscribe to our list so they can help plan their wedding or special events. So for part two, we're gonna cover the five types of email campaigns. Now an email campaign is, is one or more emails strung together in a sequence that are all related. So the first type of email campaign is the welcome email campaign. These campaigns welcome new subscribers and manage their expectations. For some tips here, you want them to be timely. You wanna send them immediately after they sign up. You wanna have a clear subject line. This avoids confusion for new subscribers. So when somebody fills out a form on your website, they opt in, they come through some kind of uh, lead magnet. Uh, however they subscribe to your mailing list, whether as a sales prospect or just information, you want to send them a welcome email with a clear subject line. Thanks for requesting our information. Welcome to the list. Welcome to company name. Personalize the greeting. Use autofill resources to include their name. When somebody fills out a form on your website, if you're capturing their name, make sure the name and email get matched together in your email marketing database. So that way you can merge in. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Susan, for subscribing to my list. Give a next step. Show them some content or tell them what to do next. You want to get them to start taking actions. Uh, you can also uh, use what we call an open loop. In the welcome email, if you put down the, the, the signature line, stay tuned, I'm going to send you another email tomorrow with our top 10 tips or et cetera. And so now you, or, or you ask them a question, what do you think about this? And so you get them thinking, and now they are expecting tomorrow's email from you and looking forward to it. Provide social media links. This helps indoctrinate them to your brand by giving them more content and more ways to connect. Make sure that they can follow you on Instagram, on Facebook, on social media. Um, if you personally uh, are willing to be the, if you're the, the figurehead for your brand and you're willing to personally share your own Twitter account or uh, Facebook page and invite them to add you as a friend and contact you directly, then by all means, encourage that. The more your customers or prospective customers and email subscribers engage with your brand, the better your overall marketing campaign is going to be. The next kind of email campaign we have is an engagement or conversion email campaigns. Now, these campaigns drive opt-ins and sign-ups for your marketing team and or bookings for your sales team. So some tips here, you wanna be personal. Write from a first person, encourage replies, and sound like a human. These emails are also better spent, better sent in plain text format. You, you don't wanna have a, uh, a big, huge branded header, a lot of graphics. You don't want it to look like a commercial newsletter because then it looks automated and robotic. If you send this email, even if it's automatically as a plain text, hi, first name, this is Aaron from company name, uh, just following up with your request for, et cetera. It, so it sounds like a human, it sounds personable. People will reply to them, people will engage with them and people will do what you ask them to do when you say click here to, et cetera. Tell a story people engage more with stories. If you're telling a story in your email and getting them wrapped into it, they, they wanna find out, they wanna find out more, they wanna find the ending and they'll click through to wherever you want them to go. Use a strong call to action. Tell people exactly what to do and make it easy to navigate. Call to action buttons are great for this. If you have, if you have a big red flashy button in your email that says click here, that makes it easy for the people to know what they should be doing. And then be mobile friendly. And this is absolutely essential. More emails are opened on mobile phones and mobile devices than on the desktop. Um, it's just critical. Your phone, your emails need to be mobile friendly so that way they can be opened and read and acted upon. And then finally, link your images. This is critical. People want to interact with emails 
So this makes it much easier for them to navigate to your site. Uh, if you have an image in your header, if you have an image down in the, the, the body of the email, if you include like a meme image or anything like that, link the image to the blog post or the landing page on your website or wherever you want the goal, the goal of the email to go, link the image because people will click on those images. Next, we're gonna talk about Ascension email campaigns. This is the third kind of email campaign that you can have. These campaigns drive people to logical upsells and or incentivize early subscription updates. So the tips here to remember is to make sure it's logical. You don't give someone an upsell that doesn't apply to them. So for example, in my business with, with ProSound, we provide wedding DJs. And so when somebody books us for their wedding as a DJ, we will then immediately send them an Ascension email sequence saying, hey, check out our photo booths. They bundle great with our DJ service. They're fun and here's why, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, that then helps us book more photo booths. Speak to the benefit. Uh, you want to talk about how this upsell will help customers achieve their goals. So for example, in, in my business, it's like, hey, you booked us for your DJ. You know, you, we, we know you want to have an awesome party. Let's take that, take that party from 10 to 11 and, and uh, uh, add a photo booth to it. So talking about how this additional upsell, this additional package, additional service product, whatever it is you're offering, matches what they currently bought. Next, we have the fourth type of email campaign we can use. That's the segmentation campaigns. These campaigns drive people to raise their hand and show an interest in specialized offers. The, the key here with email marketing and maintaining good email list hygiene is getting people to consistently raise their hand and say, yes, I want more emails from you. Yes, I want more information. Yes, I'm interested in what you have to offer. And so some, some, some ideas for segmentation, demographics like age, gender, company position, income level, et cetera. For us, demographics, I'm gonna send a different type of email to the engaged couples on my list that's gonna be different than the email I send out to the school administrators on my list saying, hey, book us for your prom, book us for your, your school dance or, or the, the corporate clients that, say, that, that I send out to say, hey, book us for your holiday party, your company party, et cetera. I'm going to speak to each market segment differently because they have different goals and objectives for our services. So by segmenting my list, I can now, I don't have to worry about the school administrator unsubscribing because they got an email related to wedding information. Um, quiz results. Create a quiz or a survey, getting to know your customers' interests and segment based off the results. It's really easy to say, hey, we'd like to get to know you. Take this, this survey, link to a survey monkey survey, and just collect some information about your, your customers. And then you can use that information to segment your list so you can better speak to their needs. Email engagement. You segment by active versus inactive. This is important for email deliverability. The email service providers keep track of who is sending emails and how many people are actually opening them versus not opening them, et cetera. And so if you are keeping track of your active subscribers versus your inactive subscribers and you treat them separately, well, now you can maintain better list hygiene and improve your email deliverability rates. Your active list, they can receive more emails more often and your inactive list, they're gonna only want to receive emails every now and then to check in with them and make sure, hey, are you still here, et cetera. Um, don't forget you can segment by geographic areas, send time-based emails, morning, afternoon, evening, regional advertisements and locally timed webinars. Uh, think about your, email subscriber list, are they all local customers to you? Are they statewide, nationwide, worldwide? And think about timing your emails based on where they're at or speaking to them based on where they're at. If you're planning an event in California versus Minnesota, you wanna to, uh, 
only email the people that are, are regional to, to where the event is gonna be taking place. You can also segment based on past purchases, recommend uh, other products based on prior purchases. If they bought this, send an email that says, hey, because you bought this, other customers also tend to buy this. Or based on amount spent, you can recommend products in a similar price range as past purchase amounts. Now the fifth and final email campaign that we have are re-engagement email campaigns. Now these campaigns strive to win over less active customers and attempt to encourage them to interact more frequently. So how do we re-engage subscribers on our list and why do we wanna re-engage them? Well, if we have our list of unactive email subscribers, we can send them an, a re-engagement sequence that says, knock, knock, anyone home? Uh, I noticed you haven't opened our emails recently. Um, I'm gonna be taking you off our list and unsubscribing you because uh, I don't wanna waste your time unless you smash that reply button, unless you click this link or something to get them to re-engage with the brand. It's, it's funny the number of times that you'll send an email out that says, hey, I noticed you haven't opened my emails lately. I'm going to unsubscribe you. And people will reply back saying, no, no, sorry, sorry, I've been busy. Or I guess I still want to get your emails. Please don't unsubscribe me. The, the fear of missing out, the fear of losing out can re-engage them. Um, when you send out re-engagement email campaigns, this lets you know who to remove from your list. There are people on your email lists that you should remove because they, they are no longer eligible to be a customer or they uh, are no longer interested in your brand. Um, for whatever reason, you want to get them off your list because you don't want to be sending email to them because otherwise they're going to get marked as spam. Important for maintaining list hygiene, the overall health and effectiveness of your list, uh, really maintaining your list hygiene is critical. Making sure that you have a good unsubscribe button at the bottom of every email, making sure your, your business name, your address, and all of that is included on the footer of every email. That helps you comply with the CAN SPAM Act regulations and helps improve your email deliverability. You also wanna make sure that you're not missing out on leads. If you have people coming into your sales pipeline and they are on your email list and they haven't bought in a while, they haven't booked yet, they just haven't really been responding, by sending out a re-engagement sequence, you can reactivate and kind of churn those older, colder leads and they say, oh yeah, I forgot about you. Yeah, are you, are you still available for my date? Or uh, can you still do this? Or can I get an updated price quote, et cetera. And then finally, the, the, the whole point of maintaining list hygiene and having re-engagement campaigns, it helps you keep your email service provider spam rates low. Um, Gmail, Outlook, Hotmail, Yahoo, all the major free email service providers, they track every sender and they have sender scores and so on. You can actually go to Google's um, Postmaster tools and enter in your business's domain name and Google will tell you how your domain is ranked for quality of email based on the volume that you send, the number of spams that they get reported um, and we'll, we'll show you what your email deliverability is. And that's a key thing to, to maintain, make sure you, your emails actually are being delivered. So speaking of that, let's talk about email best practices. The number one best practice is to never run two monetization campaigns at the same time. This exhausts your email list and turns your brand into a spam account. You wanna leave some space between your monetization campaigns to avoid people from unsubscribing or losing interest in your business. So uh, what this is, is if you run a promotion, you don't wanna have two promotions running to the same list simultaneously. You don't wanna have back-to-back -back promotions. You wanna space them out. In, in my business, we try to run our big promotions every other month or so. So that way we can then send out a promotion and then follow up some content answer some questions, some transactional emails for people that subscribe, and then two months later, send out another big promotion, and so that way we're not burning out our list. 
The best days to host webinars are on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. This is because most people reserve the bandwidth for the middle of the week. Monday is usually reserved for getting the week set up and Friday is for winding down the week, the weekend. And obviously this is why today is a Wednesday. The Chamber of Commerce has the, the webinars here on Wednesdays because it's a great time of the week for people to actually connect and consume some content. The best time to close a sale is on Wednesday or Thursday. This is also when coordinated sales teams are the busiest during the week. So if you are running a special promotion for your business, having the sale end on a Wednesday or having the sale end on a Thursday, um, if you send out a quote to a client, have the quote expire on a Wednesday or a Thursday, because that way you can send out a reminder email saying, hey, just a reminder, your special ends today, your special ends Thursday, um, call me, click here, buy now, book. You're gonna have more people opening your emails on Wednesdays and Thursdays than you would if, if you had your sale end on Friday. Schedule your emails and your campaign to go out Monday through Thursday at 9 a.m. This is when general email engagement is the highest. It's the beginning of the workday for most people and when they're most active on their email accounts. Don't forget to allocate for different time zones. If your email marketing platform like, like Keep uh, is tracking the time zones that your subscribers subscribe in, you can send out the emails at 9 a.m. The, rece the receiver's time instead of the 9 a.m. your time. And then split your email list into two segments engaged and unengaged. Engaged meaning that they are engaging, opening, clicking on your emails and unengaged is in there and they're not opening your emails as often. Or for example, they haven't purchased anything in the last 30 days uh, or whatever the time frame is for your business and products and services that you're selling. Take your best performing emails from your engaged list and send them to your unengaged list. So if you have your engaged your main primary email list, and you send out 10 emails per month. You take the top three emails from the month and figure out the subject line, the content, what are the top performing emails, and then you only send those three top emails to your unengaged list because your unengaged list, they're not opening as often, they're not clicking on your links as often, so you don't want to uh, you, you want to hit them with your heaviest punch. You want to hit them with the stuff that you know works, the emails that, that work, the subject lines, the content to get them to click, etc. And then make sure your email marketing campaigns are aligned with your company's promotional calendar. This ensures that your brand is consistent across the channels that you have and keeps your products and services top of mind for the customer. So if you have a, an annual promotional calendar, Think about uh, local car dealerships, <laughs> truck month, uh, friends and family month, uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, uh, Black Friday. Um, throughout the year, there's all sorts of reasons and times that you can run a special promotion. And so if your company has an annual promotional calendar, you want to time your email campaigns to build anticipation. Truck month is coming. Trunk month is here. Quick, trunk, but truck month is, 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 is almost over uh, and, and come in and buy a truck now. Um, you want to have those timed with the promotions to provide an overall comprehensive brand experience. Let's go ahead and talk about email metrics and the key performance indicators that you should be measuring. So the email metrics that you should be tracking, you want to be tracking your open rates. This is how many people open the emails. Now, if you want to increase your open rates, remember that the subject line of the email sells the open. If as you're scrolling through your email inbox, all you see is subject lines and you only click on the subject lines that catch your attention or seem important to you. So if you want to improve your open rate, try tweaking your subject lines. Click rates. This is the percentage of people that open your emails and click the link in the email. So if you wanna improve your click rates, that's where you adjust your calls to action. You adjust the, the copy in your email. Make sure you're using 
active language, not passive language. Use clear call to actions like click here to get it now, whatever the, the benefit, the, the transformation that you're, you're selling and promoting, um, make sure that's clear and that this is the solution and this is where they need to go to solve the problem. Click to open rates. This is a simple mathematical formula of open rates to click rates. And then your unsubscribe rates. Every time you send out an email, you want to be tracking how many people unsubscribe from your list. Um, typically, in, in my business, I see every time I send out an email blast, about 1% of the list is going to, to unsubscribe. And that's good. Unsubscribing is a good thing because the people on your list are telling you that, hey, I'm no longer interested in getting your emails. And you can say, thank you very much for unsubscribing. I'm not going to send you any more emails. And that's how you maintain good list hygiene. Um, I know too many businesses that they, they put all the work into a Facebook ad campaign or a marketing campaign. They collect hundreds, if not thousands of email addresses to, to market to and so on. They send out their first email and they see, oh no, I had 30 people unsubscribed from my email list. And then now they're afraid to send emails because they're afraid of people unsubscribing. It's like, no, you need to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Every time you send an email list, you're going to get unsubscribes. If you, you should be getting unsubscribes, unsubscribes are a good thing. That means people are opening your emails, they're consuming your content. And for every people, every person that unsubscribes, you're gonna have people that click through and buy and, and book. And then finally, the last uh, metric you wanna be tracking is your spam rates. This is the number of people that report your emails as spam to the service providers. This should be very low. We want people to unsubscribe easily so they don't report us as spam. If they're reporting us as spam, well, that means that we aren't doing our job. That means that, that uh, we're not engaging with them. They don't know who we are. Our, our, our messaging is off. If I'm sending a uh, book a wedding show special to a school administrator, mismatch of, of market. And so that's obviously they're going to mark it as spam. It doesn't apply to them. Or if somebody subscribes to your list and you don't send them any emails for six months, and now you go and send them three emails in one week, well, they forgot who you are. They forgot why they joined your list. They forgot you, you haven't been engaging with them. They're, they're unengaged. And obviously, yeah, now they're going to say, hey, who the heck are you? Why are you emailing me? Mark as spam, delete, etc. So by following these guidelines, these, these tips and building and maintaining good email list hygiene, you can keep your spam rates low and keep your click and open rates high and hopefully generate sales and revenue for your business. And that's it. Thank you very much for uh, watching here. I'm going to go ahead and put the um, first slide back on with the links to this download the presentation and there we go and um, Bailey can we go ahead and open up the floor for if there's any questions yes please do um, uh, you can either feel free to turn your camera on and your mic on jump on and ask a question or please use you, you will, excuse me <laughs> utilize the chat Hi, um, I have a question. I came into this position that I'm in in a nonprofit, the Depot Foundation, and none of nobody collected any email addresses on anybody. And we have a mailing list of about 1,500 people that we mail by yearly um, newsletters to. How do I get this list of people that we have? How, how do I go about getting these emails to start the, the this program? <laughs> totally. Uh, the best way to um, collect emails and subscribers to your list um, in the, the digital marketing realm, we call it a, a lead magnet. It's a little piece of bait that gets your leads to give you information. Um, and so what I would do is on your next newsletter that you send out, put a QR code on it and have that QR code linked to your website with a little subscribe to our email newsletter and get this. 
and provide them with some, it could be a, 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 a PDF, could be information, it could be a coupon. Um, you, you said you're with the depot? We're, I'm with the Depot Foundation, and we raise money to help the tenants of the depot have their programs like the Playhouse, the DSSO, the Train Museum, things like that. Got it. Yeah. So working with those foundations, it, it could be anything from register to win a pair of tickets to the Playhouse, register to do this, sign up for this. Um, and, and so you collect their names, their emails, and, and if you're uh, really good, I would also then make sure you've got your Facebook pixel on the, the landing page as well. So that way you can build a Facebook ad audience if you want to run Facebook ads at some point. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do there. But the easiest way is, and, and thanks to COVID, everyone's used to using QR codes at restaurants to see the digital menus. So you put a little QR code on your physical newsletter and when they get it, scan here and take them to the website, enter your name and email to be signed up to win a pair of tickets to the Playhouse. And now you're building your email list. Thank you. Great question. Anybody else? Hi, Aaron. It's Bud Trinka. Hello. Wanted to thank you for presenting the, the information, if, if nothing less, as an amateur kind of figuring my way through this. And, and this presentation helped me know that we're, we're pretty well close. To go back to this campaign idea, which is yeah. brilliant. Thanks for breaking that apart. I, I know we don't want to run things back to back. And with your help, I understand why. Uh, can you give a, a forecast for when these things should go out? Or? or how you might structure pro sound and lights? Yeah, so it, it really depends on the objective of the, the campaign. So if you're running a promotional campaign, um, you could run a, uh, a four day flash sale uh, where you hit them hard Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to, to get them to buy. Um, I'm a huge fan of a two tiered approach. So. Uh, when I run a special promotion for Pro Sound and Light Show for uh, brides to book our services for their wedding, um, we have the sale, the, the information packet, the PDF, all the pricing packages and services that we ask them to raise their hand and sign up for. So I'll, I'll send out an email blast to our entire list of leads and say, hey, we were just at the Duluth Wedding Show last weekend. Um, if you weren't able to make it to the show, click here and you can still get a register for the, the show special and get the pricing. I'm not providing any pricing. I'm not asking them to buy. I'm simply providing an opportunity for them to raise their hand and segment themselves and register for the sale. Once they sign up for the sale, then it auto delivers the pricing email and then it auto delivers the follow up saying, hey, thanks for registering. Do you have any questions? Would you like to schedule a consultation? And now the conversation's changed because I can ask somebody to schedule a consultation if they've recently engaged with my business and signed up for something. I can't send an email, well, I could send an email blast out, but it's not gonna be as effective. If I send my blast out to all 2000 people on my list and say, hey, so let's schedule a consultation. Most of them would be like, who the heck are you? Why would I wanna do this? And so on. So if, if you break it up into steps, and a, a sequence really needs to be no more than two or three emails. So you have two to three emails asking them to sign up. Once they sign up, those emails stop. And then you have two to three emails afterwards to deliver on what they requested. And then here's the next step. Here's the logical next step. Let's do a consultation, make your deposit, secure your date, whatever that logical next step is. Does that make sense? That's great. Thank you. Perfect. Um, Elizabeth asked in the chat that uh, says, I use constant contact for email marketing. Do you have a favorite platform? I'm considering 17 hats. Um, well, <laughs> Elizabeth, 
Uh, Costa Contact is a, is a good email marketing platform. I know a lot of companies that do use 17 hats. I myself, I use Keep. Uh, uh, Keep is formerly called Infusionsoft. Um, Keep is a email marketing and CRM that I use in my business. And I'm also a Keep certified partner so I can help businesses implement, set up their own Keep accounts and set up campaigns and automations pretty easily and quickly. Um, how would I compare Keep to Constant Contact? Um, so Constant Contact is a email marketing platform only. Uh, they, they send out email to lists. So you create a list here and you have multiple lists that people subscribe to. And then those emails go out to those lists. Keep is a full-fledged CRM, a customer relationship management system that has email marketing built in. And you th think of it like you have one big database of people in your system. And then based on custom fields, based on metadata, based on tags, you can create lists and save searches inside of it and track and, and manage things. So there's some technical differences, but the big thing is, is that Keep has billing and invoicing, um, uh, order forms, it has uh, full-fledged CRM tracking and they're implementing SMS texting as well. So yes, Keep is more like 17 hats. All right. Great questions. Sorry, I'm on mute. That's I think might be the other number one or number two biggest question of the year. Um, uh, she's just wondering, what is the biggest benefit that you've received from Keep? The biggest benefit I've received from Keep is um, really a lot of the automation. Uh, so when I implemented Keep in my business back in 2014, I set up a lot of these automation campaigns, a lot of, a lot of these sequences, and they've really sat untouched for the last seven years and just keep running on autopilot. So it's build it once, kind of set it, forget it. I still log in periodically and update a picture here, change some text there. I look at my numbers and adjust it. Um, but the, the automation uh, is so powerful and, and it, it's really simple, straightforward too. If, it's, if you think of it like when somebody fills out this form, if this, then that. So they fill out this form, wait four hours, send them this email wait three days, send them this email, make a to-do list of mail this postcard or integrate with this platform over here and so on. And, and uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Pat, Patty says, our target email market is high school math and science teachers and counselors. We run into problems with our emails not getting through to the individuals at high schools due to the school spam filter. How can we fix that? Um, the key there, Patty, is to uh, first make sure that your, your domain name that you are sending emails from has proper SPF and DKIM authentication turned on it for the domain name. That's, that's very technical, um, but th there's some settings that you can set on your domain name that basically say, I own this domain, mybusiness.com, and I authorize keep, I authorize constant contact, I authorize whoever your email service provider is to send emails on my behalf. That's the number one way to get, to get caught by the spam filters by not having this set up on your domain name. Then when somebody um, signs up, make sure you're sending transactional emails. If you send an email saying, thanks for signing up, and it comes from like no reply at your domain or customer service at your domain, plain text, no images, no links, those transactional emails are gonna have much higher deliverability rates. And then uh, another good thing to do is, is using email whitelisting practices. So when somebody signs up to your list, one of your first welcome emails should be, here's how to whitelist our emails so you can make sure that you get them. Ask people to drag your email into their 
uh, inbox or primary inbox folder inside of Gmail. A lot of schools are using Google Apps for, for schools and businesses. And so by dragging your email into the primary inbox, that's telling the system that, hey, this is somebody I want to receive emails from, make sure that they can get delivered. Um, and then making sure that you're not using certain keywords. Uh, you don't want to have too many links. Uh, I learned a lesson the hard way when we um, added our photo booth company to the business, uh, I added a second link in my email signature. So it had my link to our DJ website and a link to our photo booth website. So I had two links on my email signature. And that one change within a month caused all of my emails to start going to spam on Google. And uh, it took me digging with Google Postmaster tools to, re to realize what was going on, to then delete that link from all of my email signatures and all my email templates. And after about a month and a half, I was back to normal with good deliverability. So, um, Bud asks, what were the codes to send authorization to the mail server? You mentioned a couple acronyms. Yeah, um, SPF is Sender Policy Framework. Uh, and DKIM, I'm not sure what DKIM stands for, but it's another um, authorization. You create a DNS record on your domain name. So wherever your domain name is registered. If you talk to your email service provider and, and ask them, I wanna set up email authentication on our domain name, they'll know what you're talking about and we'll have a how-to guide on what settings to, to add. It's usually setting a, a simple text record on your DNS for your domain name. Great question. Yeah, I wasn't always a DJ. <laughs> uh, in a past life, I, I in college, I started a business doing uh, website hosting and website development, and then uh, spent eight years as the chief technology officer for a company called Wi-Fi Guys up in Two Harbors. And so uh, I'm a huge computer nerd. <laughs> and, I, and then I decided to, uh, to get a DJ company and become a DJ and become an entertainer. And so now my nerding out and geeking out is, is playing with emails and the internet for my businesses. So, oh, type in the acronyms, yes. Uh, everyone, SPF and DKIM. Actually, I can do this. Um, let me close that. Here. Here we go. SPF. So SPF and DKIM allow email senders to improve email deliverability. So yeah, if you, if you do a quick Google search for SPF and DKIM, uh, that'll help you out with your domain name. Great question. Anything else? All right. We have one more person. I believe um, Ann Robertson has a question. And please feel free to unmute yourself and um, go ahead and ask if you'd like. Hi, Bailey. Can you hear me OK? You sound great. Thank you. So I'm asking a question today um, for just actually another company I work at, um, Tortoise and Hair Footwear. And we have a, a very large base of um, patrons yeah. in excess of eight or 10,000. Yeah. And we're going to start a little hiking club um, on the weekends. Um, just for a couple hours and be sending weekly updates on like, here's where the hike is. It starts at, you know, this place or this time and ends at this time, same time and place, but there'll be different instructions every week, a different promo, et cetera. And obviously of the eight or 10,000 people on this list, only a handful of them are going to be in this hiking club. 
so we don't want to blast our entire list and you know as Aaron says just disenfranchise them because we're sending them things that don't pertain to them so obviously we'll probably send everybody on this 8,000 person list hey we're going to start this club are you interested in joining it and then do some stuff in the store as well because obviously a lot of our customer base isn't even on our emails um, simply because they don't want to be served emails so in terms of you know we could set up a you know a sub list just for that hiking club which makes sense and then we'll be just serving them the weekly info but to get the people on this 8,000 person list enough notice because some of them don't come to the store unless they need a pair of shoes and that could be every three months or every three years um Aaron how many times should we throw out to the general store population you know this invite um yeah. so that we hit them and anyway best practices and then is there a way to get them to join that list so i don't have to manually enter on like is it totally. just a link what would be the best way to do that yeah so you've got a list of eight thousand customers and you've got your hiking club that you want to promote um i would i would obviously run a separate list or inside of keep it would just be tagging them as hiking club and then i can send an email just to those members only and through us through a save search um so you would uh set, I, I would do a monthly newsletter um that's very common very expected by a lot of companies and and so you send out a simple monthly newsletter and and say here's what's going on at and it was tortoise in the hair correct yep so it's, here's what's going on at tortoise in the hair this month um Here's here's it. Here's some uh, in-person workshops we're doing in the in the store. Here's our hiking club. If you want to know more about the hiking club, click here and then take them to a special page on your website where they can sign up to join the hiking club mailing list. Um, you could even use use it to promote. Set up an online Facebook group, and you can use that to promote your Facebook group. Um, uh, as people click on the links in your email. So if, if you have a link to a special or a flyer um, or a link to a blog post or an article on, on proper shoe sizes or any number of things on your website, as people click on those, you can now, um, depending on your email software, track that. So if somebody clicks on running shoes, you can now tag them running shoes and versus hiking boots. And knowing that the people that have bought hiking boots versus bought running shoes now they're more likely to be interested in a running club versus uh an adventure hike uh, along the, the lake superior uh, trail um so uh there's all there's different things you can do there uh, i would start out with a monthly newsletter um a, another thing you could do too is um do a, a deep search and find the, the the smaller segment of your list that might be interested to say hey i want to personally invite you because you bought these shoes um i think you might be interested in joining this hiking or running club no well, that's an interesting thought because we have a pos um we don't have a monthly newsletter now and there's a different staff member working on our blast they're mostly promotional and starting a newsletter is probably something we're going to do um but that's a good idea. And we could take our POS and pull everybody that's got hiking boots um, and, and personally invite them, which I hadn't thought of. And I think the part of my question that I was most interested in, and I maybe didn't hear the answer, but was whether, so some of our patrons, again, aren't even on the email, so we'll have an in-store, but what is the easiest way, like in a constant contact, and I know you're on keep, just to, move those people automatically from one list to another or do you have to auto enter them hand yeah. manually you can, you can move them automatically um uh the, the easiest way is when you create a new list in constant contact they're going to give you a new sign up form that you can use so you create your your club list that has a club list sign up form and you have that on your website um and then you send the email list out to everybody and then link to that sign up form and they sign up with their name and their email and now they're subscribing to the to the club list you could use a qr code in store for people to scan to join the the hiking club 
um, you could have an iPad set up as a kiosk that mm -hmm. has a form set up to automatically enter your name and email to, to join the, the hiking club. Um, there's all sorts of ways that you can do that, but the, the key is getting them to the subscribe to that specific list. Okay, thank you. And, and I'll talk to our web. We're, recent, we're doing a website update and I'll talk to our different people that do stuff in. Um, again, I won't be managing the constant contact other than this one hiking club. So these are great ideas and a number of the things you said I didn't think about. So thank you for your time, Erin. And thank you, Bailey, for letting me ask that question. Thank you, Ann. Yeah, and it, and it looks like Tracy wants to actually join the hiking group and put her email address in the, uh, the chat for you. So yeah, I'll tell that to, send it to, to, um, <laughs> to Bailey and I'll pick it up there. Yep, I'll send it over. <laughs> But yeah, I, actually, I just have to say, I actually am representing Novus Healthcare, but um, I do on the side also do the tortoise in here. So forgive me if I've created confusion in my membership, but um, I appreciate the advice. But maybe we have to join for tortoise and hair too, Bailey. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. We're about um, wrapping up. Um, I think if, unless you have any questions, otherwise, um, I will be sending out a recap email along with the recording, and then um, maybe if it's okay, the, the, the QR code for the slides or anything too as well, just to share that. And then Erin, if you'd like to, I can send out your contact information. Um, totally. So yeah, yeah. Well, thank you everybody for attending today. This concludes the program um, and just uh, be on the watch for that email. And thank you for attending. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Have a good day.